When people think of motorcycle racing circuits, they picture two-wheeled machines gliding inches above the asphalt at over 300 kilometers per hour. But what truly determines the limits of speed isn't the motorcycle itself, but the perfectly constructed racetrack. A professional racing circuit is not simply a strip of asphalt shaped to the terrain. It is an extreme engineering structure. The foundation is reinforced like an airport runway, surface flatness is controlled down to the millimeter, and the surface roughness is carefully engineered to provide grip for dramatic high-speed corners. So how is a high-speed racing circuit actually built? Join Mandarin Tech uncover the engineering secrets behind the world's fastest racetracks, starting now. Now we will visit Silverstone Circuit in the United Kingdom, a historic motorsport venue built on a former Royal Air Force airfield in the English countryside. The circuit is approximately 4.31 kilometers long and features 17 corners, combining high-speed bends with heavy braking zones and was designed to meet MotoGP standards. The track surface uses advanced polymer asphalt, optimized for grip in conditions where surface temperatures often exceed 50 degrees Celsius while still allowing rapid drainage during intense tropical rainstorms. The track width ranges from 12 to 15 meters, enabling multiple racing lines and safe overtaking at speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour. However, after just one year, the circuit suffered from asphalt bleeding, where bitumen rises to the surface under extreme heat, making the track slippery, reducing grip, and causing bikes to lose traction at high speed. As a result, during the 2023 upgrade, the entire foundation structure, base course, and drainage system were reinforced. The first step in building the Silverstone circuit began on paper, where engineers were not just drawing a racetrack, but shaping how humans would control speed at the absolute limit. Built on the site of a former military airfield, the track layout was designed to maintain a very high average speed with long, large radius sweeping corners linked together, forcing both the car and the driver to operate under constant maximum load. On the design plans, every parameter, such as geometric curvature, track camber, lane width, sight lines, and safety zones, was carefully modeled in detail. In particular, given the UK's frequent rainy climate, drainage systems and surface grip were calculated from the very concept stage because even a small deviation could turn speed into serious risk. The design team also used specially designed simulation software to create a realistic experience. After the design was finalized, the concept was brought into reality at Silverstone Circuit, where the first phase focused on site clearance and ground preparation on a scale far greater than most spectators would ever imagine. The entire construction area was thoroughly cleared, vegetation, Grass cover, organic topsoil, and deep root systems were completely removed to prevent future settlement and deformation. Remnants of the former military airfield, from concrete runways and rigid foundations to outdated underground infrastructure, were selectively dismantled or reprocessed. The site was then graded to the designed elevations, not to create a perfectly flat surface, but to form a precise terrain that define longitudinal slopes, crossfalls, and drainage paths. Once the site is cleared and graded, the subgrade construction begins with controlled soil placement, where selected fill material is spread in thin, uniform layers along the track corridor. This step ensures consistent density and prevents uneven settlement that could later distort the racing surface. Heavy machinery then distributes and levels the soil precisely to the design profile forming the base geometry for elevation, camber, and drainage. Each layer is compacted using rollers to achieve the required load-bearing capacity, eliminating air voids that could weaken the structure under repeated high-speed stress. In areas exposed to moisture, geotextile membranes and drainage elements are installed to separate weak soils and manage water flow beneath the track. This staged process of placing, grading, and compacting creates a stable, uniform foundation. Once the subgrade is fully stabilized, construction crews begin placing steel reinforcement mesh over the surface, positioned precisely according to the designed elevations and layout. These steel panels are carefully assembled 
to form a continuous structural framework that helps distribute loads evenly and reduce the risk of cracking in the layers above. After the reinforcement system has been fully installed and thoroughly inspected, the foundation concrete pouring process officially begins using long-reach concrete pump trucks, ensuring even distribution across the entire surface. The concrete mix is strictly controlled in terms of slump, temperature, and pouring time to prevent segregation and ensure uniform strength. During placement, workers use mechanical vibrators to remove trapped air, allowing the concrete to fully bond with the reinforcement and achieve the required density. Immediately afterward, spreading machines and screed beams are used to level the concrete precisely to the designed elevation, creating a foundation surface accurate down to the millimeter. This step is critically important, as the concrete layer determines the long-term geometric stability of the entire structure above. Finally, the concrete surface undergoes controlled curing to prevent early cracking, forming a solid, stable foundation capable of supporting the high-speed asphalt layers that will follow. After the concrete base layer is completed and fully stabilized, the next step is asphalt paving, but this asphalt is fundamentally different from ordinary road asphalt. Racing circuit asphalt typically consists of around 70% aggregate, 30% bitumen, and about 3% polymer additives to enhance grip and thermal stability. Whereas conventional road asphalt usually follows a ratio of roughly 90% aggregate, 10% bitumen, and about 1% additives. This specialized asphalt structure allows the surface to be elastic enough to absorb vibrations, yet rigid enough to resist deformation when vehicles break hard or corner under extreme lateral loads. Once the mix design is finalized, the raw materials are delivered to an asphalt mixing plant near the construction site and blended in a forced action mixer at a temperature of around 170 degrees, ensuring the bitumen reaches optimal fluidity. The mixing process lasts approximately 60 seconds, with the mixing paddles operating at about 80 revolutions per minute, allowing the bitumen and polymer additives to fully coat each aggregate particle. This controlled process ensures the asphalt mixture achieves the required uniformity, adhesion, and structural stability. Afterward, the hot asphalt is discharged directly from the mixing plant into insulated specialized truck beds through a sealed loading hopper system this method allows the material to be transported straight to the construction site in the shortest possible time, minimizing heat loss during transit. Now the asphalt paving stage begins. For a racing circuit, the surface is not paved in a single layer, but is built from three different asphalt layers, each serving a specific purpose. Much like constructing a multi-layer cake, the bottom layer carries the load, the middle layer shapes the geometry, and the top layer provides grip for the tires. The first layer, the primary load-bearing layer. This is the first asphalt layer to be laid with a thickness of approximately five to seven centimeters. Its role is to support the full load of racing vehicles during heavy braking and high-speed cornering. The asphalt is prepared at the mixing plant at a temperature of around 160 to 170 degrees Celsius then transported directly to the site in insulated dump trucks. On site, the hot asphalt is fed into the paving machine and spread evenly across the surface like a continuous hot carpet. The paver moves slowly and steadily, ensuring a flat and uniform base from the very first pass. Once the lower layer has stabilized, the second layer is laid on top with a thickness of approximately four to five centimeters. This layer smooths the surface and distributes loads evenly down to the layers below. At this stage, multiple machines operate simultaneously. The paver spreads the asphalt, vibratory rollers compact it from the inside outward, and rubber tire rollers perform a final pass to press the surface, ensuring strong bonding and eliminating air voids. The third layer, the tire surface contact layer. This is the thinnest yet most critical layer with a thickness of approximately 3 to 3.5 centimeters. It directly determines how much grip the car has on the track. The asphalt used in this layer contains special additives designed to withstand high temperatures and generate high friction. During paving, the temperature must be kept extremely high. If the mix cools too much, the surface can become porous or begin to peel. Rollers are allowed to 
Operate only within a very short time window while the asphalt remains sufficiently hot. Mistiming this step can ruin the entire surface. The entire asphalt paving operation must proceed continuously, without interruption. A single delayed delivery truck, an unexpected machine shutdown, or a thickness error of just a few millimeters can force an entire section to be milled off and rebuilt from scratch. Even under rainy weather conditions, the paving process is not allowed to stop once it has begun. Specialized coverings, drainage control, and strict temperature monitoring are used to keep the asphalt within its workable range despite the rain. Any unplanned pause could cause the mix to cool unevenly, risking surface defects that would compromise the entire racing line. For a racing circuit, this is not simply road construction. It is the creation of a precisely engineered surface, where every centimeter directly affects speed and driver safety. After the asphalt paving is completed, the surface is left to cure and stabilize for approximately two weeks. Once this period ends, the testing phase begins, with service vehicles and test cars running at gradually increasing speeds to evaluate surface grip, smoothness, and structural response. Data from these test runs is then analyzed to confirm that the track meets the required safety and performance standards before official use. In parallel, additional works are carried out, including the installation of safety barriers and the construction of grandstands. These elements are designed and positioned to protect drivers and spectators while maintaining clear sight lines across the circuit. Together, they complete the transformation of the site from a construction zone into a fully functional racing venue. And so the racetrack is now ready to host international standard MotoGP races. After a period of operation, the racing surface begins to show clear signs of deterioration. Thousands of high-speed laps gradually wear down the top asphalt layer, causing it to harden, lose the elasticity, and become polished. Heavy braking forces concentrated at corner entry points, combined with the heat generated by racing tires, accelerate the aging of the bitumen far more quickly than on conventional public roads. If the track continues to be used without intervention, Reduced grip can make vehicles more prone to sliding and significantly increase the risk of loss of control at the performance limit. The first step in the repair process is removing the rubber buildup and cleaning the surface. Rubber from racing tires is heated to extremely high temperatures and bonds tightly to the asphalt, especially along the racing line and at heavy braking zones. To address this, maintenance crews use high-power thermal burners that apply direct heat to soften the rubber and break its bond with the asphalt surface. Once heated and loosened, the rubber is immediately scraped off and vacuumed away using specialized equipment. This heat-based method removes rubber effectively without abrading or damaging the underlying asphalt structure while restoring the track's original design friction characteristics. Next comes the milling of the old asphalt layer, the most critical stage of the entire process. High-capacity milling machines are deployed to remove the worn surface layer to a precise depth, typically several centimeters, depending on the level of damage. Milling depth is continuously controlled using sensors and laser guidance systems to ensure that the underlying structural layers remain unaffected. The removed asphalt is collected on site and transported away for recycling or further processing. After milling, the surface must achieve consistent flatness and texture, creating ideal conditions for bonding with the new asphalt layer. Once milling is completed, the placement of the new asphalt layer begins immediately. The fresh asphalt mixture is produced according to the original design specifications, with strict control over material composition, temperature, and mixing time. Hot asphalt is delivered continuously from the mixing plant to the site to prevent interruptions. On site, paving machines spread the material evenly across the prepared surface, maintaining the correct elevation and cross slope of the circuit. The paving process must remain continuous. Any interruption or uneven cooling can introduce weak points into the pavement structure. Immediately after paving, compaction and surface stabilization begin. Vibratory rollers perform the initial compaction passes to achieve the required density, followed by rubber tire rollers that press the surface to eliminate air voids and strengthen the bond between aggregate particles. Rolling sequences, travel speed, and the number of passes are carefully calculated to avoid disturbing the still hot asphalt. 
This stage ultimately determines the flatness, durability, and load-bearing performance of the racing surface when cars operate at their absolute limits. And so the track has been completely repaired for the next race. And so you have now fully understood the process of building and repairing a racetrack. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and let us know. Now, goodbye and see you in the next video.